going from junior developer to senior developer is a way of crossing the bridge between junior to senior. And how does it work? Is it enough to simply just program years after years to become automatically a senior developer? Unfortunately not. To become senior, you need to have a plan and you need to be very deliberate about it. Even if it's, it's back-end technology, but hear me out for this short example. I have been programming with Node for more than 10 years. But during the first years, I remained stuck as a junior Node developer simply because I was always using the same thing. So I was using Node simply to create a REST API or to create a web server using Express or Koa to be able to listen to requests, respond to requests, and sometimes to persist data to Mong MongoDB directly or using Mongoose. So it's easy to do this after just a couple of weeks using Node. But then if you don't push yourself to go beyond, you can remain junior for years. So this, it's not a matter of how many years you've been using a technology. It's really a matter of, of intent. Then I heard about the importance of in Node of two things, events and streams. So we know that many things are asynchronous in Node. That's why there, there, there are callbacks everywhere. But also, it's easy in Node to create events because you can inherit the, from, from the event emitter class. So you can create code that emit events that then you can listen to and react to these events. And also, the second most important things in Node are streams. They are everywhere. You have reading streams you can read from, streams that uh, you can write to and you can combine streams you have duplex streams so there are lots of streams so once you discover these things you know ah there is something else that i can learn in order to go from junior to let's say intermediate node developer so you learn this stuff and you realize okay now how is it possible then to create uh, a web server that could stream a video for example without uh, waiting for all the data to, from being read. So this is a second step. And then you realize that there are many design patterns specific to Node. So once you're in this intermediate state, you could say, oh, OK, it's OK. Now I understand what's specific to Node. I can just uh, go back to, to my routine, uh, and that's it. But then you discover that there are specific design patterns uh, that are either from the Gang of Four, so you see all this pattern that you've probably heard of or read about, but also that there are specific design patterns based on JavaScript, and also that uh, you can increase, you can improve the developer experience if you make a smart and, and effective use of uh, queues that allow you then to store um, comments that you can execute later when, for example, the connection is back on or, or so, this kind of stuff. So you see a new level that you can reach and then you you start to work to reach this new level. So to make a long story short, uh, the years you spend on a technology is not enough to make you automatically a senior developer. And it's the same when you want to go from junior to, to senior. For example, I, I knew during my first year of being a programmer, I met a guy who was studying C++ since he was 14 years old. 14 years old, the age usually you spend most of your time playing video games on these kind of things. And the guy at 20, so he already had six years of experience in C++. That's why I tell you that it's not a matter of years or, or it doesn't depend on your age. It depends on being deliberate. So the guy decided at 14 years old to learn C++ and he was very committed to it. So how can you do to become an intermediate or senior developer faster? You have to start being deliberate about what you are learning. For example, it could be the same in front-end technologies. So maybe you know enough JavaScript to be dangerous, I would say, so you can react. You know what events you can react to, you know how to interact with DOM elements, you know how to interact with CSS, you know. But then you will hear about things that you're not sure about. So maybe you've heard about closures and you want to know more about these closures things, or you will hear about currying, about function composition, about composition versus inheritance. You see, you will quickly hear about them. So then you can start learning about them. But then 
what often is is limiting your progress and your knowledge is that you hear about them, you read abstract tutorial or blog posts or something like that, and you don't see how this can improve your own uh, everyday programming life. So then you have to figure out in which scenarios this kind of knowledge is useful and then to look, to dig, to see how these new concepts are useful. Because very often you will notice that uh, advanced knowledge is not used directly by the average programmer. You often this kind of knowledge is used by guys that, who will create tools or libraries that will be used by other programmers. So maybe it's time when you feel comfortable with doing your everyday programming task to see what you could create for your peers.